again watching season two, episode three. The following program is sponsored by Happy Science. Hello and thank you for accepting our invitation to happiness. Ryuho Okawa is a global visionary, a renowned spiritual leader, and an international best-selling author. With his deep spiritual insight, wisdom, and compassion, Okawa is committed to guide people to true happiness and create a better world. To accomplish this, he founded Happy Science Group in Japan in 1986 which has become a global movement in over 100 countries. His vision and message to the world goes beyond the differences of race and language. Together, throughout this program, we will explore ways to attain true happiness through a spiritual perspective and how to create a better world starting from within. Today's topic is how to achieve true success. We all chase dreams, goals, and want success. But what is true success and how can we achieve it? Before we find out, let's first ask the people in New York, what is true success to you? Fulfillment, self-fulfillment. Um, for me, somehow impacting other people's lives in a positive way that helps me feel like a, a better person. Being able to do what I want to do uh, to, to do things that I enjoy without having to worry about money. True success is being happy, in my opinion. True success to me is when you find yourself. When you're happy with yourself, you're definitely successful. It's all important when you're happy with yourself. True success is enjoying life as much as I can and learning and meeting as many people and making as many connections as I can. It's truly discovering yourself, being who you truly are, not trying to please other people. At Happy Science, the definition of true success includes the growth and improvement of our souls, along with contributing to the happiness of others. The result of our success is very important. At the same time, it is the mindset, specifically our motivation and attitude behind success, that are equally important. With this in mind, let's listen to Okawa about the important mindsets in achieving true success. What is most important for human beings is what he or she always thinks about. Aside from the thoughts that you coincidentally have on a single day, what you think about over the course of a year, three years, five years, ten years, or 20 years is what determines who you are. Your mindset is what is important. Part 1 talks about living with simplicity and a carefree spirit. This is a surprisingly valuable principle. Over time, our minds become overcomplicated as we learn and experience more and more new things. The more knowledge we gain, the more things there are to think about. And the more we go through a variety of experiences, the more we start to think negatively. The complexity of our lives makes us indecisive. We become stuck between choices and begin to spend a long time agonizing about what to do. We expect to get smarter as we gain more knowledge and experience. But many people find that as they go through their 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s, they spend an increasing amount of time fretting and feeling troubled. 
We should be getting wiser, but our thinking becomes too elaborate and we cannot simply get things done decisively. It is easier to act bravely and decisively when we are young because our knowledge and experience are quite slim. There is nothing to hold us back. But we begin to lose this as we age and start to take a defensive approach. We begin to overthink and may hesitate to do things in a new way because we think the old ways are good enough. Or we might waver on deciding between two people over the fear of taking sides. Instead, we should make persistent efforts to keep things simple and uncomplicated. To discipline ourselves to think rationally, pragmatically, and simply while accumulating more experiences and knowledge is a kind of wisdom. It is actually difficult to think simply, but the results are tremendous. Thinking simply gives us the power to take action. Many intelligent people become paralyzed by overly complex thinking. So from time to time, we should remember the value of being plain and positive. Just be modest and live cheerfully. Stop dwelling in and holding on to the past. Stop thinking too much about other people's feelings. Forget about your grudges and envious thoughts. Get rid of them immediately. This is simplicity. You will learn to live gracefully by accepting things as they are and swiftly move on. To live gracefully has many meanings, but in short, Grace comes from the ability to let go of one thing to gain what has more value, despite having countless things that we desire. Attachments come in many forms, and if we try to hold on to many things, we become paralyzed. So make the decision to choose the things that are important over the others. Just let go of lesser things you will find that your heart feels much lighter. I believe that living with simplicity and grace is a truly wise way to live. There is no purpose in being sandwiched and paralyzed between two choices. It only results in a lot of wasted time. We are prone to developing inferiority complexes from childhood. There is no one without one complex or another. But the question is, to what age we hold on to these complexes? You have spent too much time dwelling on them if you still have it at the age of 50, 60, or 70. You must let go of it somewhere along the way. You must get rid of your complexes and change them. People with inferiority complexes have little room to think about others. They are only thinking about themselves and are concerned about how to be saved. So we need to overcome them as soon as we can. It is another form of self-centeredness. It is important not to carry inferiority complexes with you for so many years that they become a form of egotism and self-centeredness. Stop paying too much attention to yourself and just shift your focus to helping other people. No one in this world is completely free of an inferiority complex. But it is important that we overcome such feelings and change ourselves from someone who is troubled by our own problems into someone who helps other people find solutions to their problems. So it is most important to reflect on your state of your mind. Step four in I'm fine spirit.
is about being strong in the face of criticism. We should try to be positive and accept our worries, work responsibilities, and hardships in a constructive way. The purpose of being born into this world was not to live an easy life. At Happy Science, we believe that the purpose of our lives on Earth is to face challenges that will help our souls advance to the next level and shine even brighter than before. If you ever feel as though life is being tough on you and you are facing too many hardships, remember that we are never given a burden that is too great for us to bear. You were given the problems you have been facing because you have the ability to withstand them. No matter how tough our lives become, in the final analysis, we will all pass on from this world. You need to understand that your habit of repeating negative thoughts is what is making you unhappy. So look back on yourself before you let the next negative thought slip from your lips. Try again to accept your problems. And for the problems you face, whether it be at work or in your life as a whole, please embrace it peacefully and consider why you were given such problems. Please accept that they were given to you for a chance to grow. I would like you to remember not to run away from the problem and instead face it with courage. In the final analysis, there is not much of a difference in people's abilities. What it comes down to is our courage. Strangely enough, when we have a lot of knowledge or are in a position of power, we tend to act with less courage. This is what causes problems. So it all comes down to courage. I believe from now on, increasing number of people in their 40s, 50s, 60s, and beyond will begin learning new languages and change jobs. Some people will change their jobs. When you change jobs, you will feel inexperienced and come across work you've never done. Honestly speaking, this is scary. When you are inexperienced, things appear scary. It is not difficult to start something new in your 20s, but in your 60s, it can be quite tough to work in a new field. Again, at Happy Science, the definition of true success is the improvement of our souls along with society. Because our lives are so closely connected to others on a daily basis, it is important to seek success that also benefits society in order to produce real prosperity. With this being said, let's review the four important mindsets in pursuing our goals. First, we are what we think and our thoughts create our future. Second, think simple. Instead of overcomplicating matters, think simple and stay focused. Third, don't compare yourself with others, but bless them instead. Fourth, stay resilient, positive, and courageous. Don't run away from challenges, but confront them with courage instead. Let's proceed to the last three mindsets. The most important thing is to believe that there is power in self-affirmation. You should repeatedly affirm yourself that you will be fine. The principle of the I'm fine spirit applies here. You should constantly and repeatedly give yourself positive self-affirmations and say to yourself, I'm fine, I can do it, I can definitely do this. By doing so, you will begin to be able to do it. We are never too old to start over. I have found that you are never too old to start exercising. Our physical fitness has nothing to do with our age. In the final analysis, people who successfully develop good habits are the ones who come out on top. Whether in sports or in studies, you need to use willpower in the beginning. But once you have created good habits and practiced them over and over, they will transform into power before you know it. Step 7 of I'm Fine Spirit is about making the effort to radiate positivity 
all the time. This is a very important point. Our friends will begin to leave us if all we do is talk about negative ideas. No one wants to be around messengers of doom. So instead of saying, for example, something bad is going to happen to me, our business is going to fail, or the world is going to get worse, try to radiate positivity. We all like people who are cheerful because we feel energized when we spend time with them. If negative words have a habit of slipping from your lips, make a strong effort to stop them. Even teenagers can fall into this bad habit. But pessimism tends to become more of a habit as we age. Of course, this is often caused by physical fatigue and emotional trauma. Still, this does not change the fact that everyone wants to stay away from pessimistic people. So we should make an honest effort to give off positive, constructive energy. When you begin to get the hang of thinking positive, you will learn to help yourself. That is, you will learn to generate your own energy. It is my hope that all people will become self-generators. We should make it our goal to have the power to light ourselves up, make ourselves glow, and shine our inner light brightly. And when, in time, you learn to maintain a positive, constructive, and cheerful attitude, no matter what trials come your way, it means that I have managed to save one person out of the seven billion people on Earth. I am sure that once you have achieved this for yourself, you will move on to saving the people around you too. There needs to be more light. This world needs more light. What is this light? It is the light that shines in the darkness. It is the opposite of darkness. Then what is darkness? Darkness symbolizes ignorance of the truths, complaints, feelings of discontent, an excessive desire. When we look inside our mind and find it filled with an unsightly muddiness, that is what I mean by darkness. We should never become dark people. Instead, our aim should be to become people of light. If you suffer from discontent and a lot of complaining, you should realize that your state of mind is attuned to hell right now and you should try to find a way out of that dark world. It will be too late if you wait until you pass on from this world and find yourself in the dark underworld. So start looking for the way out immediately. How can you do it? I have been teaching you to correct your mindset. First, think of the kind of seeds you should sow in your mind. Next, the kind of attitude you take from such mindset become important. And finally, the kind of action you take is crucial. If you have time to complain, ask yourself whether you can spend that time engaged in more constructive, positive, courageous actions. I would especially like to emphasize that you should stop looking for excuses. Instead, look for ways to move forward, little by little. It's a sign that we have become too clever if we find ourselves making excuses before we even try. Many people start doing this as they get older and intelligent people are prone to this habit. So if you notice that you are making excuses more frequently, take a moment to reflect. Make the decision to stop. Be more constructive and search for other ways. There is nothing productive 
and explaining to your boss your reasons why a job cannot be completed. But those who search for and suggest ways to make improvements will be able to help save their company in times of recession and develop their company in times of stability. People blame the government or the world, but the truth might be that we just need to change our attitude. So begin by changing your habits, the things you say, and your way of thinking. If we do not challenge ourselves again and again, we will never be able to accomplish anything. If you think that your ideas are good or right, then keep coming back with them. If you often make excuses or run away from your problems, please make a constant effort to change your life to a positive and constructive one. By doing so, I am sure that you will achieve success gracefully. The following three mindsets are 5. Believe in yourself 6. Use the power of habit 7. Use positive self-affirmations to motivate and encourage yourself. Stop making excuses and repeatedly challenge yourself. Next, let's hear some encouraging words from Okawa in English. In our teachings, uh, I said uh, Buddha nature, uh, uh, good nature. Uh, 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 it's the origin of self-trust. From this uh, self-trust and self-confidence, uh, uh, you can say, I'm fine every day in your setbacks. Uh, if you can say, I'm fine. Uh, if you keep I'm fine attitude, uh, you are a great man. Uh, stop complaining and think positive. Uh, don't think uh, negative. Negative thinking leads you uh, to the hell. Uh, so please change your mind uh, and choose a positive uh, thinking. I usually usually uh, say to you uh, that uh, what you think is what you are. Uh, so uh, please think positively uh, every day. Uh, please uh, get uh, get through your tough times uh, by uh, positive thinking or by uh, uh, I'm fine uh, spirit. Uh, uh, please say uh, uh, be positive or I'm fine or every day. Uh, so uh, make uh, uh, some value uh, to this world, uh, uh, produce uh, some uh, kind of uh, uh, dreamful uh, uh, works uh, in this world. Uh, Mm, be positive means uh, uh, have a dream. Uh, you must have a dream. If you uh, want a dream and, and realize your dream, uh, you must be positive. Uh, uh, be positive attitude uh, leads you uh, to realize Oh, your dream. Uh, we must have dreams. Uh, dream uh, for uh, Buddha land, uh, utopia. Uh, so from now on, please say, I'm fine in any case uh, if you um, uh, in tough times, uh, please get through uh, by this word, I'm fine. Trust in your divine nature and make a fresh start from today. Become a person who can generate positivity from within and illuminate the people around you. 
This is what true success really is. Aim to become a person that can always say, I'm fine, I can do it. At Happy Science, you can listen to Okawa's other lectures related to today's topic. We also offer success seminars, as well as ritual prayers, such as prayer for success and prayer for economic prosperity. We are here to support you in attaining happiness in life. For more information, please contact a Happy Science location near you. If you would like to learn more about Okawa and the teachings of Happy Science, visit invitationtohappiness.org or call us at 929-323-4737. Here at New York Temple, you'll find all of Okawa's publications and video lectures. We are here to support you in building a bright future. Come join us for weekly Sunday workshops and weekday guided meditations. Also, please find us on Facebook and YouTube by searching Happy Science New York. Your happiness is our mission. For more information on upcoming events, go to invitationtohappiness.org. Once again, thank you for accepting our invitation to happiness. Join us next week as we continue our journey to happiness with the topic, The Mindset That Conquers Cancer. See you next time. Two things what I really liked about this book is first is about success. I think I was seeking for something more technical or some strategies so that I can be successful quickly and easily. But what he talks about was eye-opening because the most important point to be truly successful is about mastering your mind. And the second point is about time. So everyone has 24 hours a day but actually you can increase the time you have by having the wisdoms, by gaining the peace of mind and be successful. This is the best book. So I hope you enjoy and be happy. The preceding program was sponsored by Happy Science. Thank you for uh, joining me for Invitation to Happiness, Season 2, Episode 3. And hello everyone watching from YouTube Live. My name is Ari. Um, we just heard from Master Okawa, the founder of Happy Science. And these success principles, he has been um, practicing for his entire life. Happy Science is now in over 200 countries. There are over 500 locations. And he, as he said, he wants uh, saving people's lives is, um, saving people's souls is, number one, of course, uh, making sure that they can return to heaven after they uh, graduate from this uh, life here in this world, but it's also about helping people realize that they are their own power generator, that they can not only just generate their own energy, generate their own positivity, but also share that with others. And in ways that are not just abstract, but you are, you can be, each one of us can be a generator of happiness, and even wealth and prosperity 
And in this time, especially when we see a lot of people having to depend on the government because we aren't able to uh, interact as we used to, go to work as we used to, everyone is kind of dependent on um, a greater power to supply them with unemployment pay or an income or uh, to be able to sustain our lives. But um, the money that the government has and is giving out, handing out, was made possible by tax that was paid by people who worked and paid those taxes. And eventually that reserve is going to run out unless we generate more wealth. And it is within each of our power to be able to do that. That's what Master Okawa wants to wake us up to in terms of, in the context of success. We might think that, oh, uh, becoming wealthy or becoming uh, somebody who can uh, be successful and continuously be successful to be prosperous because that's what prosperity is. Prosperity is not just a one-off success, but it's a continuation of success. A lot of us think that that's something that is written in the stars for certain people, but for the rest of us, no. We are confined to a lifetime of employment or hustling or struggling or even simple survival. That's what a lot of people tend to think because they maybe picked up that uh, view of life from their parents, from school, from um, people around them, and they might have never had the opportunity to encounter perspectives like Master Okawa is giving. But when we encounter hardships, when we fall into a pit and we hit our bum, when we fall into financial difficulties, when our relationships, they fall apart and leave us alone, when we find ourselves beginning to feel hopeless and despair of how we are able to even, how we are going to be able to even prop ourselves up sustain our own lives, much less our families, immediate families, if they are, um, if we are responsible for them. Those moments in life are actually planned by heaven, given to you so that you will hit a wall and realize that you need to wake up to a new perspective of life, that whatever has made you think that you are confined to your own ways of thinking, your own beliefs about the world is not enough. So heaven put that pitfall in your way so that you will fall into it and stop and have to think, what am I missing here? You needed to discover. Heaven had put that pitfall right there so that you will stop and discover prosperity thinking, or the philosophy of I can, or think big, or maybe it's just simply discover God, eternal Buddha, cultivate an unshakable mind. Whatever it is that you need right now uh, will, be, uh, will differ from person to person. But you have to, I think, the, the message that heaven wants you to, to get, no matter uh, what your circumstances is, is you are stronger than you think you are. You are more resourceful than you think you are. The wisdom you need is inside of you. You are not deprived of this. And if you wake up to that, and if you realize that you are your own generator of this, and that you can do that, then a whole new world opens up before you because you become someone who other people appreciate. You become someone who can benefit so many other people. And wealth, Master Aka says, is simply a lot of people benefiting from you and appreciating you. That's why they pay you for your services or your products. And that's how you get an income. 
So the more people there are who appreciate you, are benefiting from what you are offering, the greater the, your wealth will be. So wealth is not, money is not something you have to be scared about. It's not this elusive thing that you have no idea how to get. All you have to do is just focus on thinking about how to benefit other people in a way that will truly make them feel appreciative of you. Not in a way in which you kind of deceive them, dis manipulate them in thinking that they are benefiting from you. No, just be honest. Just be sincere. And people will genuinely appreciate you and they will express that uh, appreciation. And that's how money will come to you. Money, status, reputation, fame, all these things that we cannot get from wanting will simply follow when you just focus on thinking about what can you do for others. And of course, because um, a lot of people have tried to do that, but then they might have been disappointed or discouraged dis um, or maybe just burnt out, that's why it's important to remind yourself that you can generate that aspiration, the desire, sacred desire to want to work and benefit others yourself. Why is that possible? To answer that question, I feel it's very, very important to encounter faith. Because it's so easy for us to fall into the thinking that we are a limited existence. How much we can give to others, how much energy we have for others, how much time we have for others, how much love we can ha give to others, we feel like there's a limit to it. Because we can feel it. We can feel it depleting. <laughs> we can feel it when it hits zero. We can feel when our um, gas tank is empty. We can feel it when we're running on empty, right? But Master Akka says, oh, and then the, um, the only thing that's infinite and limitless is God. If we don't wake up to that, then when we look around and we only see material, physical things, everything seems to have a limit. Even the resources and wealth and in the world feels like there's a limit to it. So that's why we kind of fall into the thinking of scrambling to try to be the first to get it and try to get the most before somebody else takes it away and deprives you of it. Um, we have to wake up to spirituality. And we have to wake up to religion in order to discover the infinite, in order to discover the limitless. And God, or with the primordial Buddha, or Allah, or the central God of whatever faith you have grown up with, whatever tradition you've grown up with, um, is that infinite, limitless existence. Here at Happy Science, we call that existence El Kantare. It means the light of the earth. And because this world and we were created by this infinite existence, we are a part of his existence. In fact, we are a reflection of his will. We too are limitless. If only we can wake up to that and tap into that. Furthermore, because this world is also, this planet that we inhabit is also a manifestation of the will of this infinite existence, it's also infinite. There is no limit to how many people it can sustain. Right now there's 8 billion people living in this planet. Uh, it can sustain 10 billion. Uh, people feel that there's a limit to the resources. We can use ingenuity, we can use wisdom to try to maximize what we have here. And we can also discover new resources. It's because this world too is a creation uh, created by uh, infinite existence. And religion is the bridge connecting you to God. So when your fuel tank hits empty and you feel like you need to find a gas station to fill yourself up, well, that gas station is God. If you need to feel like you need to plug yourself in um, to charge yourself, the plug is in heaven. Just plug it into heaven. When you have ardent and deep faith in God, your mind will combine to the heart of God in heaven. It means you have goodness, beauty, or truth in you. I want to say to you, while you are keeping a peaceful mind in you with good faith, 
you are near God. Or in some meaning, you can be a neighbor to God. But you are sometimes easily disappointed with yourself because you, as a human, are apt to make a lot of mistakes and you've experienced a lot of disappointment in your own history. So you'll feel hesitant to accept this kind of thinking. Of course, human beings have a tendency to make a mistake. There is an old saying, to err is human, to forgive divine which means that human beings usually make a lot of mistakes, but only God has the right to forgive them all. It's the traditional meaning of faith and the traditional acceptance of religion. Moving on to the subject of success, because we can explore forgiveness another time, but the one thing to take away from this, I believe, is that you are, you are connected to the creator, Alcantara. And that means that you are a fragment of his light. And that means you have a creator in you. This creator doesn't mean you made the sun, the moon, the earth, or the stars. That's a little too much. You can create these things in the planetarium, of course, but in reality, it's a little difficult. But you can imagine a lot of things in you. And what you imagine in you itself is the possibility of designing, building, and realizing your plan or your dream. So that's why Master Akal was saying in the lecture we saw, realize the power of your thoughts. What you are thinking about is creating your reality now. We are entering a time when our lifespan will probably increase. He has another book called Advanced Living, Happy, Healthy, Active at 100. Our lifespan is uh, increasing from 70s to our 80s. And soon, with the medical advancements, in, uh, medical advancements, it will take us to our 90s, 100s. People who think of retiring at 60, they have 40 more years to live. 40 more years places you at where you were at 20, looking forward to retirement at 60. What are you going to do with those 40 years? You're either going to despair and wish you could die because you have no idea what you're going to do, or you're going to look at it as a second life. And Master Akka is saying, that your physical health is not tied so much to your age. He gave a lecture called Creation from Faith, and he was saying, I'm looking at myself in the screen. I'm old enough to be retired, but I look like I'm in my, my 40s. And I think a lot of people nowadays with the kind of uh, boom of the health and wellness uh, industry are discovering that, yeah, you could be 60, 70, and looking really good. And it's a matter of habit. It's a matter of choice. It's a matter of lifestyle. Um, and these are wonderful ways to experience the power of your thoughts. Imagine what you can accomplish if you had three years, five years, or ten years. There is a program in Happy Science called Life Reflection. And in it, people who retire take this life seminar, uh, this life reflection seminar, so that they can reflect back on their life starting from age zero and reflect on all the experiences that made them disappointed or discouraged about themselves and that has chipped away at their ability to believe in themselves, chipped away at their ability to say, I can and have the courage to start something new. And then they discover that those experiences, even the negative ones that left them with inferiority complexes, actually equipped them with wisdom, equipped them with strength. And then it takes away the fear of taking on something new and possibly failing because you're imbued with the confidence that even that failure is going to give you wisdom and courage. And so it kind of like liberates them. And then you enter uh, a phase where you start planning your post-retirement years. And then I remember seeing um, an example 
life plan post-retirement, and it went something like, from 60 to age 70, I am going to study business again. And from age 70 to 80, I'm going to start a business and succeed. And at age 80, I'm going to sell that business. <laughs> And from age 80 to 90, I'm going to study, uh, further study Master Akawa's teachings of the mind and of life and the soul and the afterlife. And then from age 90 to 100, I'm going to be a life coach. I was blown away. <laughs> I was like, wow, that's inspiring. Like I, after starting to learn Master Akawa's teachings, I started um, kind of, becoming interested in maybe um, starting up a business, maybe learning how to make money so I can like maybe encourage others to also believe that they can do it too, even if they feel like money making or like management is on the complete opposite side of the spectrum that they're on. Um, but I never knew how to fit that into my life. But after discovering that life plan, I was like, oh, I can start at 70. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm sure that everyone has dreams that they've just shelved because they're thinking. But the truth is you are not your physical body. You are your soul, which is the thinking energy. And so even if you try something new at age 70 and it doesn't really take off, the fact that you still even tried becomes a part of your soul and that's a muscle you can take back with you to the other world and it will serve you well even in your next life so there is nothing that is a waste so all of this is reason after reason to be positive to not be afraid to not set limits on yourself and we first have to begin that liberation letting go of all the bonds whether it they be past experiences that has turned into inferiority complexes or the feeling limiting yourself because of your age your educational background the family you were born in the city you're living in now your present financial circumstances right now let go of those limitations first in your mind and that will change the choices you make today and these Changes in your choices that you continue to make day after day after day will accumulate. And just as 10 years of your life shot by, the next 10 years will go by pretty quickly. But with this new mindset and with a new intention to change the way you live, you will be somewhere completely different in 10 years' time. Not even 10 years, maybe in five years, maybe in three years, maybe even by the end of 2020, because things happen very quickly in happy science. You will be able to look back and be astonished how you are a completely different person. And I assure you, you will be so happy. And that has been my experience here in happy science in the 12 years that I've been here. I had a an inferiority complex over communication, over my ability to speak. Um, I grew up in a Japanese family, so the parents spoke Japanese at home and I had to speak English at school and with friends. And I felt like I was mentally um, challenged because there were two languages crisscrossing through my head and I could not, uh, express a sentence without losing what I had wanted to say or how this sentence was structured. I could not even finish a single sentence because I, by the time I was midway through, I had forgotten how I had started my sentence. And it really um, affected my relationships because I was so scared of communicating, even with friends. But then I encountered Master Ka's teachings, which said something like, it's not a sin to uh, be bad at something. But it is a sin for you to let that stop you from moving forward. And he also said, the reason why you might be struggling with communication might not be because maybe you're like weak in the head or something. Maybe, um, maybe it might be because you don't really have something you really want to say. 
And that made me stop in my tracks and then think, you know what? Because he says, because if you had something you really wanted to say, you would be able to really say it. And there were times like that in my life. So now I couldn't make any excuses anymore that I, I was like mentally, um, what do you call it? not as sharp as other people, that there was something wrong with my brain. I couldn't make any excuses anymore because he had pointed out that it was not a matter of me not having the capacity to do it. I just didn't have a lot I wanted to say. Because when I did have something I wanted to say, I could just speak. Those occasions were few, but they did exist. He pointed that out to me. So, so the solution there was study, read, listen expand your inner world and you are what you th uh, think you are it was so true um, if you give up and if you think if i had given up and thought that i am just a bad communicator if i had never worked to be better i would not be standing here but even though there were many times when i wanted to give up and say i'm just not cut out for this that desire to want to share master cause teachings just would well up again and I would just have to drag my body up and say but I still want to share so I cannot give up I have to drag myself up in front of another person or an audience and give it another go and have to believe that practice makes perfect and after 12 years of that I'm seeing progress so again I believe it's true that you are what you think and the moment you give up, that's the end. But if you, as long as you don't give up, the way will open. Master Okawa says in this book, uh, Prosperity Thinking, If you can say to yourself, if I am still trying hard, even after failing three times, then I have the capacity to be a leader. If I'm still trying hard, even after failing 10 times, then I could become a genius. The laws of success simply is perseverance, he said. Because if you keep at it, you will get better. You will gain wisdom. You will gain experience. And you will be able to figure it out. This actually is a quote from Napoleon Hill. So if you've read any of his books, you might uh, feel this might be familiar, familiar to you. But Master Akal is uh, emphasizing that this is true. So bounce back over and over again. Develop the strength in yourself to turn the tables around and get yourself out of adversity. This is extremely important and especially necessary now in this difficult era of the coronavirus, of a coming recession, of turbulence, of uncertainty, of not knowing what the world will look like in the future. But even the future of the world is built upon the collective determination of the people living in this world. As Master Ka said, if everyone in this world says the world's over, the world will be over. But if everyone in this world said no, there is a future for this world. We are going to create that future, and that future is going to be a great one for everyone. We can create such a world. But for everyone to be able to say that, it has to start from each one of us. And it's only by presenting an example of us believing in our future and working towards it and making it happen can we inspire others to believe in the truth of that as well. So I truly feel that it starts from each one of us. So let us um, recite this sutra, the true words spoken by Buddha. because this comes directly from the primordial Buddha, from the creator God. It is the bridge that connects you to the infinite to allow you to fill up your tank. And then once our tank is filled up, then I would like for us to uh, practice a short meditation to visualize our future. Because if we can visualize it, then we know how we can uh, build the stairway to it. Matsushita Konosuke is a famous Japanese entre entrepreneur and businessman. He created Panasonic, if you might be familiar with that. But uh, he started off with um, just an elementary school level education. But he said, it's the ladder to take you to the second floor was invented because somebody wanted to get to the second floor. 
So if you visualize your future, then you will figure out how to get there. But you first have to visualize your future. Visualize your 10 years later, your five years later, your three years later. So let us recite this sutra together and practice that meditation. I'm going to be looking this way because the altar here at Happy Science New York Temple is in this direction. The true words spoken by Buddha. There used to be the light in the great universe. The light is the energy of Buddha. People can live by this energy, and Buddha's energy has made human history. It will be supplied eternally. This eternal light comes from heaven and prevails on earth. This is the light of heaven. Through the prism of Buddha, there appear the seven colors of rainbow, arching over in the sky. Here you can see Buddha's mercy. Yellow is the color of teaching. White is the color of saving. Red is the color of justice. Purple is the color of obedience. Blue is the color of thinking. Green is the color of harmony. Silver is the color of progress. These seven colors help each other, and there appears Buddha land. Buddha land is shining brightly because of gathering of bodhisattvas. This is the land of love or the land of mercy. This is the land of wisdom or the land of teaching. Especially, this is the land of souls, rest, and peace. Real souls are the children of Buddha. The children of Buddha became real human beings. Real human beings have spirituality. The spirits are immortal powers. The spirits are immortal forces. The spirits are real entities. The physical bodies are the shadows of the spirits. It means you are the boat sailing down the great river. The great river is a symbol of the course of life. Each of you sails down as a small boat, so you need a boatman. If it were not for your own boatman, you surely go aground. This boatman really means your head. Mind, if your mind makes a mistake, the boat breaks into pieces by a large rock. And you also need a bamboo pole. This pole is the meaning of the true words. When you go down a rapid stream, you need to punt in a stream. Then you can change your course. The true words means the teaching of Buddha. Buddha enlightened and spoke the true words and Buddha's teaching became a gold mine. This gold mine suggests various teachings. These are another expression of Buddha's truth. It brightens up your day. Or to put it another way, the fruits of Buddha's mercy. All of you, now, here, listen to me. Never lose your way, now and forever. The guiding hand has already waved. Please follow this white hand and go straightly on and on. Your lives are not limited to this world only. They have three aspects, the past, the present, the future. Your past have already gone by, yet still your mistakes will be kept in your mind. That is the reason why you should understand other people, and you yourself should reflect on what you have done. You and others are not different. On the contrary, both are children of Buddha and brothers and sisters. Now then, love each other. Let us bring up each other. And it's time to forgive each other. This is the eternal law, which penetrates the present and the future. Yes, indeed, the light of the dark night. The dark night of this world is hell. It is also the same in another world. Since we came down to this world, the sun of the truth is scheduled to rise. Now we are watching rising sun. It will shed light to the future to invite sad people to Buddha land. Now, here I command, there shall not be conflict in this world. There shall not be distrust in this world. There shall not be crime in this world. There shall not be evil spirit in this world. There shall not be the devil in the next world. Only the ideal world, utopia, shall be realized. All of the people love each other, live harmoniously, believe in one another. That world is utopia. All of us could be the light of bodhisattvas. Believe in that the light has reality. Believe in that love has reality. Believe in that the truth has reality. 
These are the facts that should be conveyed. We, the light of Bodhisattvas, get together, work together to keep right mind and live in tune with Buddha's words. Here we vow to do so. Now begin our meditation. First, we will calm our mind by simply breathing in deeply, in and out. So take a deep breath in through your nose and let it all out. Breathing in lots of oxygen allows us to relax our body, and when our body is relaxed, our mind has an easier time relaxing as well. And this is important because your mind is always connected. The mind being the center of your soul, your heart, is always connected to some place in the spirit world. You want to be connected to heaven, not to hell. Or better yet, connected to the primordial Buddha, the creator, to God, to El Kantara. In a relaxed, serene, peaceful state of mind is the wavelength of heaven. And so that is what we are trying to achieve. We are trying to connect to that. Please take a few deep breaths in and out. Set aside any worries or thoughts that you might have running through your head. And just focus on your breathing. Allow yourself to relax and be at peace. This peaceful state is you as a soul, unfettered, unbound by the limitations of your physical body, by the limitations of what you may be experiencing in life in this physical world. Connected to God, the future is infinite. The possibilities are boundless. Everything you experience, you can change to wisdom and strength, courage, and your love for others is infinite. That is why you can benefit so many people through your work for whatever you wish to achieve. From this mindset, please imagine your future. Please imagine what you wish to be doing, how you wish to be living, who you wish to be. And think of it in terms of long-term goals, short, uh, medium-term goals, and short-term goals. If you like to be more realistic in this visualization, Think about where you want to be in 10 years' time, five years' time, three years' time, and by the end of this year. Please allow yourself to open up to the inspiration from heaven and to the truth of who you really are. For you planned your own life, what you wish to accomplish that will bring greater happiness to many people in this world before you were born before you began this life. So that plan is already within you. Please allow yourself to open up to seeing that plan. Please begin.
Please take a deep breath in. Let it all out. Gently open your eyes and your visualization. I hope you realize that this is very simple to do. Uh, this sutra, if you don't have it yet, you can receive with a $10 donation, even online. You just recite it, and it does wonders in just calming your mind down, giving you peace, and making you feel hopeful, making you feel like you can be forward thinking, think about the future. And truly, um, every day it comes at you. Life is just an accumulation of days. What sort of life you live depends on how you use your 24 hours. So you want to think about that. Be more proactive in shaping your life. You will be happier for it. And uh, the energy to do so you can receive through this sutra. And uh, watching Master Akkad's lectures or reading his teachings will help you to uh, feed your soul so that you can enrich your ideas, uh, have more ideas for your life for your future. And Master Kao is giving us all these teachings because he wants people who are successful and prosperous, but good-hearted as well, whose success means um, more uh, wealth that uh, can help people in need, people who need a little uh, help from outside as well. Uh, we need people who can do that. If everyone falls onto the side of needing and depending, who will be there to help lift up others? We need such strong people. So that's why he's giving us these teachings. Next week is the mindset to conquer cancer. Um, for success, we need our health. And so if you are struggling with that, um, if that's an issue for you, uh, how to start from there? we'll be covering that topic next week. So please tune in and don't miss it. Yeah, are there any questions? If you have any questions, please uh, send us an email or give us a call. The number is 929-323-4737. And also you're welcome to visit us here at 79 Franklin Street or in New Jersey um, in Edgewater. Uh, we very much look forward to seeing you and hearing from you. So that's all from me. Thank you very much. Let's just take a bow and a hand.